except see some mistakes which I already told. Uh, we decided to do a rewrite and see uh, more about that later. And I really want to thank Higer and HC for taking that software with me because it wasn't only me that did that part. So, the network file, so your local network file contains um, a public key and uh, a P range for um, that part you're using. To get all the nodes, it downloads that file from a speci specific URL which is in your config. Why are we doing that? So we have a solution that can provide more than one network. So we did it for uh, Warzone, we did it for Chaos VPN, it's more uh, known as Agora Link here. And if you like uh, to do your own network, you can do it easily. Portability. This was very, very important for us, so this is one of the reasons we do a rewrite and see. Uh, it now compiles on every major system. We're looking for more. Um, special thanks for the first compile under Windows. I'm not very much into that part. And we really strongly suggest to put it on embedded devices. And this was the main reason we did that part in C because you don't want to run Perl in, in on an embedded device like a little router. After we did the rewrite from Perl in C to the 26 C3, uh, we added some new feature to make it more comfortable. One of these features is we have this restart function that um, it restarts the things in a specific interval you can define in your config. And this interval means uh, it checks if there's a new config available, so it requests the HTTP server for the config. And if it gets a 304 response, it knows, okay, I didn't have to change anything, so I also didn't have to change, uh, restart the thing to, the, uh, to get the new config. Uh, we added an R archive support, which means we didn't have to download each host file. We can download one file and get an archive which includes all the host configuration, the main configuration, all the things you needed. And we also added some signing and encryption, more about that later by Eric, to um, get a more encrypted part. It also provides HTTPS, but this is different crypto. We didn't want to use it for that. And all that stuff is in around 4,700 lines of code, uh, so it's not that much. We tried to get rid of uh, most of the dependencies because you can build it on more systems when you have less dependencies. We are still backward compatible, which uh, is the reason why we have this strange config file at the moment. So it's written in Perl style. Sorry for that. But you still can use an old config file with a new software. Um, the only thing is uh, we added new features so we have to add new config entries but we set proper default values so if you don't define that values there's a default value for that. To make it a little bit more running on all devices, especially um, embedded devices, we provide a lot of images and archives for all Linux. Uh, I think we also will provide a Windows download in pretty soon. But most people um, put it on these nice little devices for Nero 2.0. This photo is actually from Null Space, DC 949. Just Null Space. Just Null Space. Um, we got the experience that these devices running pretty good. They are very stable. They are less power consumption. So especially in Europe, energy is much more expensive than it is here. So we care about energy consumption. So we really suggest to let it running on better devices. You make it ready, it's running, you didn't touch it anymore and it's running for years. Uh, another reason is to buy these little embedded devices. They are not that expensive. You can get one for 20 bucks. Uh, if you want to have a proper one, you can get one for 100 bucks, you can also put an MP3 player on it and it's basically 
it's run device, it's not a PC where other people get their fingers on, install new software and it's not running anymore. And it's really much more energy efficient like uh, a computer is like 50 bucks a month in power and these devices like 5 bucks in power a year. So in Europe for that. Uh, I'm not so much into that crypto part so uh, uh, I really think that Eric is here and I give over to him. Thank you. So hello, uh, I'm Eric and I'm here to talk about the crypto part of Chaos VPN. So usually uh, when you write software, you will usually either you will usually notice very soon when you have done something wrong because the software starts crashing. Except if you have a security problem or you have a crypto problem, then this won't be noticed for a long time. So in Chaos VPN, uh, every participant in the network owns an RSA key pair, which means that you have a private key, or you are the only owner of that key, and with the private key you can decrypt uh, some messages but you uh, well but you're the only one who can decrypt that and every other participant in the network has a public key uh, knows your public key and uh, he will be able to encrypt messages for you but he will not be able to decrypt messages for you. Um, the Chaos VPN client connects to a server and downloads an encrypted and signed configuration file for Chaos VPN which is um, encrypted only for you and it's signed so after you've downloaded it you can decrypt it and then check that nobody has altered the file on the server or during the transmission so you know that this file is authentic. Um, after the file has been uh, decrypted and verified uh, the client uh, generates a Tink configuration and starts Tink and Tink can now establish connections with all other nodes in the network and it can authenticate these other nodes using their RSA public keys. So when two nodes connect, uh, they do an RSA key exchange to establish a session key. And after they have a session, they can exchange packets and these packets are encrypted using Blowfish by default and they are protected with a SHA-1 HMAC so that nobody can alter these packets. So far, that's uh, reasonably well crypto in Chaos VPN. There are currently some weak points. That means that you can still improve that crypto part. So, so far, the configuration is distributed over a central server, which is not so good. You would like to have that uh, on multiple servers. However, if the primary server here fails, then this network still stays up. So you can, the network can run for hours, days or week uh, even without the central server. The only thing which does not work is that you cannot update your network configuration anymore if the central server is down. Uh, currently I think there are replay or downgrade attacks possible so an attacker could not really alter your network configuration but he could give you an old network configuration even if there are new one is, even if there is a new configuration already out there. Uh, with Tink or Chaos VPN it's possible to route packets indirectly between two nodes. So if you have two Chaos VPN nodes all behind a NAT gateway, they might not be able to communicate directly. In this case you can route traffic indirectly. Um, so far Chaos VPN does not reuse standard formats for crypto like IPsec, ESP or AH, uh, AHA. Um, to encrypt and protect the packets, but this could be added in a later version. And currently we don't have perfect for secrecy in the network. This means if uh, you have a Chaos VPN node running now and one year later somebody is able to recover your private key, then you will be able to decrypt your past traffic. Uh, in the future we would like to have more uh, administrators for the configuration and uh, more distribution points for the configuration. Uh, even a decentralized distribution of the configuration would be nice. 
and we would also like to give participants of the network more choices in who they trust. So currently they trust a central configuration, but you can extend that to a kind of uh, PGP or GPG-like web of trust so that every participant can select certain nodes in the network he trusts and some nodes in the network he doesn't trust so much. And we would like to have indirected routed traffic in the network which is only decryptable by the final destination so that you can uh, route traffic between two nodes who cannot see each other because they are firewalled or whatever um, with the assistance of a third node who will be able to pass, this traffic through this, uh, to pass the traffic through but he won't be able to decrypt the traffic. Okay. Uh, next class will be done by McFly. Any questions for the crypto part? Or it works so uh, so far it works reasonably well. Okay, the so question was how good does Blowfish work on these tiny devices like uh, embedded access points and uh, the answer is so far it works reliably well but this is a configuration option so Blowfish is a default but you can uh, extend that to another, you can change that to another algorithm. Uh -huh. So. So, for example, some of these small devices have accelerators for the AES encryption algorithm because WPA uses AES to encrypt packets and uh, if you change that to AES you will more likely get a performance boost. Um, we have chosen the Fonera 2.0N as, well, reference design because this is fast enough to uh, host most uh, available broadcast connections you will have at uh, hacker spaces or people uh, p spaces where people hang around like uh, they can solve up to around 20 to 30 mbit downstream and upstream equals so I think that's not too bad if you have a bigger connection like if you're in, in a university or stuff like that uh, you'll possibly want to uh, use different hardware for that that is true also, if you want to do some hosted servers, don't put the f an, an embedded device in front of it to do the crypto if you have like a gigabit internet speed. Then you will net just need a bigger computer where you can install FreeBSD or OpenBSD or Debian, for example, or Arc Linux, whatever you want on that. And if you want to play around with the code and the compilers, you can also install Windows or Mac OS X on it. Uh, more fresh questions for the crypto part? Okay, so I hand over to McFly. So I'll just shortly explain what the general status of the case VPN is at the moment. Uh, and then we will go over to Warzone, which is the second implementation. This is for the playing of CTFs. Like you remember from the beginning, our idea was to build up a network to play CTFs. But for this, we decided to redo the Chaos VPN first, which connects hacker spaces. And you will see what we use there. Um, and yeah, it's starting to get used for CTF stuff. So, uh, general status is the life, the network works, more and more hacker spaces are joining, IP ranges are compatible with some other networks, uh, and some peers to DN42, which is uh, another VPN exists. Uh, those are, for example, a list of some hacker spaces involved. Uh, like, well, I don't read down all of them. Uh, those are more or less a lot of the bigger and older ones. Uh, the maybe more interesting thing is what is up on the network. So we have a DNS up there, voice over IP is used very much, but that can't just be it. So. For example, one of the first things to have an additional use of the network is um, a rainbow table hash lookup system. Um, some of you might know Ben Coates and has read his Twitter feed today in the morning that he just upgraded that to a new version. Um, there's a box maintained by him on this network um, which is just for the network and pretty fast. Um, I think we if you want to try that out, you will find out that you get most of the hashes. I think we are at 
10 or 11 keys and all, key, all keys available on the German, American and English keyboard for MD5 and a uh, word book for MD5 and the whole LAN manager stuff and that. Um, we're working on uh, 